This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. All right, so this is a mini film breakdown. And the reason I wanted to do a mini film breakdown this week to go along with the full offensive and defensive film breakdown is because when I put my question prompt out for Q&A, I saw a lot of immediate post-game reaction that wasn't like in the positive direction. It was almost all pointed towards Jed Wills. And watching the broadcast, I didn't really have a problem with anything that Jed was doing in that game. So I was kind of surprised to see this. And you guys know, when it comes to Jed Wills, you can't take what you hear from fans at times 100% at face value because there seems to be an amount of people who kind of just blame Jed Wills for stuff that's not Jed Wills' fault. That doesn't mean that Jed Wills is perfect. That doesn't mean that Jed doesn't have bad games. He most certainly does. But it does mean when you hear people sharing screenshots or, or, or being upset at Jed, you need to look at that a little bit closer because you, you just can't take the noise at face value. Like, usually there's something disingenuous going on there or there might be something real there going on with Jed, right? People just kind of hyper fixate on him. So what I wanted to do real quick is just look at Jed, um, look at the offensive line, kind of break down some things there on a little mini film focus um, for, for Jed Wills to see if these complaints are valid, if, People are just doing the jet thing. You know what it is. Let's get into it, mate. All right. So first play right here. You're going to see Jed Wills. And I think he does a nice job with this um, with this twist, right? They try to twist and confuse him to get inside on Jed. You see Jeffrey Simmons is trying to get that inside, you know, that inside shoulder check. But he does a good job of holding his ground and then also getting that inside hip of Jeffrey Simmons, which is very tough to do. It's one of the best defensive tackles of football. So he does a good job of getting that inside hip and kind of reverse hump moving him out the way. And then Joe Batonio does a good job cleaning up on that twist. And they kind of take care of that. On the other side here, it's a little bit more messy. If you look at the other side, Dewan Jones and Wyatt Teller, Wyatt doesn't really let the his rusher release into Dewan so he can accept 58 coming in because you see the twist but fortunately for them on this side 58 Harold Landry just takes a horrible angle at this twist so he ends up getting his feet caught tripping his own guy up so that's a good good one there by Jed let's go here so run play now this is on Jed and Kareem so what happens here is that both Jed and Kareem block the same guy on this run Look, if one of them, and let me bring up Epic Pen here so I can draw this out. Sorry, I didn't have it up before. But basically, what you would want here, if I go back to the beginning of the play. So the Browns are pulling. And you have the numbers. You have exactly what you want. Here, I think backside does a great job sliding. He does a great job sliding. Um, and then you're pulling Jed and you're pulling Kareem. So you can get the ball to Deshaun. And Deshaun should have all this space. He could score on this. He'll probably get to like the 10 if this is ran properly. But he could score on this. Um, look, I think Jed's supposed to take him. And I think Kareem's supposed to get downfield and take him. But for whatever reason, both these guys go at him. That could be on Jed. Maybe Jed's supposed to get downfield, right, since he's the first pull. Maybe Jed's supposed to be first here and then Kareem gets here. I could see how that can get a little sloppy or maybe Jed got confused or maybe Kareem got confused. By the way, this is a mistake that cost you a pretty good chunk. Instead of getting into the third down conversion and more, you know, you, you, you end up getting nothing. And your quarterback hit, right? Because he should be able to get to the sideline here. But this mistake here 
and by both of these guys, you know, Jed and Kareem. I think maybe what Jed thought he was going to do, maybe what Jed thought he was going to do was he was going to help here so Kareem can finish that block and then get back upfield and take care of this guy. And it just didn't happen for him. He got caught up, tied up. The guy tied him up. Let me see the end zone angle. Oof. Yep. Yeah, he, he must have thought, because his angle is clearly towards where 26 is supposed to be. Like, he, he is clearly. So maybe he thought he was going to help and get out, but then he got caught up, and his feet turned, and then he just got bad. Um, you know, trust that Kareem's got that, if you're Jed. I think trust that Kareem has that, because Kareem has that. Now, I don't know if he was told. You know what I mean? Like, that's an also another thing. Maybe he was told to help. But still, you know, just trust that Kareem has that. Either if, if it's on Bill Callahan, Kareem, or, or, or Jed, somebody's just got to trust that he has that. Because all he has to do is slow him down a little bit. Um, 26 is the bigger priority for him. And 26 ends up getting a hit. So, you know, whatever happened on that play, it's probably on both of them. This play right here. You see Jed do a great job. Locking his man out. And then, look, this is the thing that I've been complaining about with Jed Wills for a while. Is he lets himself get beat inside too easily. And this is what a lot of the, like, valid complaints about Jed's effort are about, right? When he lets somebody beat him inside. But this is a different, he did much better in this game. Like, you got to give him his credit. Because usually what happens here is he gets beat inside and he just lets it go. But instead, this time. He gets beat inside, and he does He does a great job of just riding that out, right? I'm going to ride this out. You will not get that inside angle. You will not push the depth of the pocket. I'm going to ride that out. You want to pop back outside? Okay, we could do something about that. Me and Deshaun talked about that. But you want to get this inside angle? You're not going to get it. So does a great job riding that out. And let's Deshaun get a throw off. That's a that's a good that's a good play for me. You know? Yeah, he got beat, but he recovered well. Here, does it just does a great job locking his man out. Doesn't have to do too much. Locking his man out. Let's see on the other side. Let's see what Dewan's doing. Dewan just strong as shit. <laughs> Dewan Jones is only winning this rep because he's strong and long. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. Um, good help there by a teller. All right. This right here. Again, another good job of just riding it out, right? Okay, you're going to get beat inside. You know, these guys know the book on you. They're going to try to beat you inside. Adjust. I'm, it took two years, but he finally seems like he's adjusting. Ride it out. Ride it out. Push it in. Boom. Push it in. Good things happen. This play right here. Run fake. Is this run action? This looks like a run action. Yeah. All right. So for those of us who don't know, I know a lot of us do. But for those of us who don't know, there's a difference between run action. So I'm going to say RA and PA. Now, it's kind of a Q-tip situation where we call all run fakes play action. That's not true. There's a difference. Run action is when the offensive line bluffs a run on top of the run fake at the top. Play action is just when you bluff the play the run at the top with the quarterback and the running back. Um, you'll see in play action plays, you'll get normal drops by your uh, offensive line. Maybe they'll get a pull here and, and slide and let a free run come away because you can get a clear angle that way. But run action, they're going to act like they're run blocking. One of the misconceptions that I saw from last week was, hey, Jed Wills, you know, what was he doing on that play where Deshaun gave up that fumble? And what he was doing was a run action. So that's more on the play call, Jed giving up that sack, 
than Jets' effort on Monday night. I thought the play call was just unnecessary. Why call a run action at that point of the game when all you have to do is kill the clock? It didn't make sense. It was too risky. The, the Steelers' offensive defensive line were dominating you all day. Why put your offensive line in that position? So I thought the play call was bad because in a run action, you're not going to have enough time to get back on an Alex Highsmith if you run fake. Play action, you can get away with it. But run action, no. So this is a run action. You could tell it's a run action by watching Jet. Right? And watch Jet and Jet's run blocking. Right? He's run blocking and then he has to come back, snap around. But they do a good job with Jerome Ford bringing him in on a chip. Again, another issue I had with that play call was that it was a run action and they had nobody there to chip or anything on Highsmith. This time they chip. You get time. Deshaun still has to go out there. And look, people screenshotted this play. And they're like, oh, my God, Jet, just let him run by. What's he supposed to do? It's real easy to see a screenshot and be like, oh, he's supposed to do this. But they do the run action. He has to haul ass to get over here. They have the chip block in. He takes care of that and helps his running back like he's supposed to. Now he's turned around because this is a run action. And then Deshaun gets hit here because he holds onto the ball, throws it. He tries to make a play here. What, what Deshaun's trying to do, Deshaun's trying to run this so that Coop can come downhill and get open, right? That's what Deshaun wants. He wants Coop to come back downhill, open up a lane. It doesn't happen. So he blows the run action. Uh, but still, man. The thing about this play is that the ball is supposed to be out. Like, the chip block's there. The ball is supposed to be out here. Like, by the time Deshaun gets here, make a decision. Either you're throwing that thing. to Either this looks open or it's not, right? So, basically, out and over, right? That's what they're running. Out and over. And, look, none of this is here because this linebacker has inside leverage. So, you're not throwing that. That's done. And they have this covered. That's boxed up, no angle there. Um, so if you're Deshaun, you just got to throw this out the out the way. You know what I mean? That play should be over by now. But instead, he tries to extend it. And the reason that's a bad idea is because in a run action, if you try to extend that play, nobody's going to be in position to help you out pass blocking wise. So you're going to get ran at. Again, you could blame that on Jed. That's not on Jed. That's more on Deshaun than anything. Right there. Jed did everything he was supposed to do on that play and more. So, you know, people are going to nitpick one play. He was good the whole game, but people would nitpick it. He does a good job. Run action. Again, run action. Does a good job even slowing down Joe Batonio's man. Gets a hand there. Pushes him right into a double team. You see how that push was effective here, right? Boom. Gets him into that double team. Hauls ass. Gets back over to this edge, well, not this edge, but this um, this nickel that's blitzing. And then the linebacker just chases and follows. And what's Jed supposed to do, man? Block three people on one play? Like, he's trying to just get the hell out the way so he doesn't mess up the play. And, you know, that happens on run action. Whenever you see somebody share a screenshot, when they could have easily, and you know, let me say this again, whenever you see somebody share a screenshot, when they could have easily showed you a video, they're probably trying to manipulate you. Ask yourself, why are they trying to give me less information than they can? Right? If their point is Jed Wills is terrible and Jed Wills had a terrible play, why are they showing me one frame of the play? Whole play is like, what, 30 seconds? You got a bunch of frames you can show me. Why one frame? Ask yourself that question. Whenever somebody's trying to convince you a player's terrible, a quarterback's terrible, but they only showing you screenshots, it's probably because they're trying to manipulate you into thinking what they think by using very, very, very out of context evidence. Right here. All right, so this is a run play. I think Jed did a great job here if we watch him. Great job of making him run that arc, right? What you want to see is you want to, if you get beat inside, ride them. Take that hip, ride them inside. Don't let them get deep. Or if you get beat outside, make them run that arc, right? Wide arc is possible. 
and Jed does a great job of making him run that arc, right? So what you don't want, when Miles be rushing these edge rushers, he gets an arc like this, right? Like that's the arc that Miles gets. You want an arc to look like this. And that's what Jed does here on this play. He makes him run that arc, does a good job at it. Look, run the arc, run the arc, run the back help, boom. And this could have been caught if uh if this was not like blatant pass interference by zero, but it doesn't get called. You can see it at the top of the route. All right, last play that we're gonna look at here. I think Dewan doesn't do a great job here. Jed does fine, stays there, blocks, anchors, that's fine. But Dewan lets his man through here. You could tell because you can see Dewan's face right now. Yeah, I think some kind of confusion happened here. It looked like Njoku was supposed to help him, but like the angle got weird, so he just ran out. Um, and then you get two on one on Wyatt Teller. Yeah, that's just a protection breakdown. Maybe that was something that didn't happen at the line of scrimmage. Deshaun still makes something out of it. Good on him. All right, so that's the little mini film breakdown on Jed. We're going to be doing the regular film breakdown still, but that's the mini one. And, you know, I think people need to, like, wait. You don't need to make a declaration after a game or it doesn't have to be every time that Jed Wills is terrible. We can wait and see what the whole season looks like. Look, Jed's had an up and down history. We all know that. He hasn't been exactly what you wanted from the 10th overall pick, but he hasn't been a complete bump. So, you know, you're just going to have to wait this one out, see what you get from Jed. But so far, you know, I think he's been fine throughout the season. I think he got blamed for a lot of stuff that wasn't his fault in that Pittsburgh game. Thought he had a legitimately bad game week one, but I think he's bounced back quite fine from that. Um, And I think Wyatt Teller has even bounced back quite fine from that. Dewan Jones looks pretty good outside of a couple of mistakes. And I think this offensive line is really gearing up to have their best game here pretty soon. So all in all, just wanted to look at Jed, see if these Jed Wills complaints were legitimate or if people were kind of just used to being mad at Jed. Um, but yeah, that that's that. Y'all have a great day. Having better night. More film breakdowns dropping today. <laughs>